Big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Stick around till the end to hear about our special offer. Say I had a function f of x that looked something like this, with a single dip and a single peak. Suppose I wanted to find the values of the x-coordinate that corresponded to the stationary points of this function, so the points where the function is not immediately changing, where it's literally stationary. These stationary points could be local minima, the dip in the function, the local maxima, the peak in the function, or saddle points. But how do we find these stationary values of x? Well, if you remember from Calculus 1, you remember that in order to find these stationary values, you take the derivative of the function and set that derivative to 0. Then, the values of x which satisfy f prime x equals 0 are those same values that make the function stationary. How do you know whether the solutions you get to this equation actually correspond to a local minimum or maximum or saddle point? Well, you do further testing like using the second derivative, for example. For the function I've drawn here, the point x1 is obviously a local minimum, while x2 is obviously a local maximum, but you won't find out the nature of x1 and x2 just from solving f prime x equals 0. You either need to graph the function or use the second derivative test. So now that we've gotten this simple example in mind, let's compare how regular calculus works to how calculus of variation works. In regular calculus, we deal with functions. The goal of a function f is to take a real number as an input and to give a real number as an output. Calculus of variations is similar, but this time we deal with functionals, or functions of functions. A functional i takes a function f as an input and gives you a real number as an output. Now, in regular calculus, we can find the stationary values of a function by taking the derivative of that function and setting that derivative to zero. But in calculus of variations, we don't find stationary values, we find stationary functions of a functional. To do this, we solve a special differential equation, which is more complicated than just df by dx equals zero. I'll mention this differential equation later in the video. Now, the point of this whole comparison is to give you some intuition behind how variational calculus works, and to demonstrate that the principles are similar to those in regular calculus, except now we've got an additional layer of function. Stationary points are replaced by stationary functions, and functions are replaced by functions of functions or functionals. These terms that I've discussed so far, like functional and stationary functions, might still be a bit abstract and confusing, so let me illustrate what they mean with an example of a typical problem you'll see in variational calculus. Suppose I have two points on the xy plane, a given by x1, y1, and b given by x2, y2. Suppose also that I wanted to find the path linking A and B that minimizes the distance between A and B. Now there's multiple, multiple ways of traveling between A and B, some of which I've animated here, but in the end it's obvious that the shortest path between A and B is a straight line. This is just from basic geometry. But how do we arrive at this conclusion, this conclusion that the shortest path on a flat surface is a straight line? Well, we can use calculus of variations. If we formulate this distance minimization problem as a calculus of variations problem, we can start by writing the path length integral i as the integral along our path from points a to b of the arc length element ds. This ds is just the square root of dx squared plus dy squared by the Pythagorean theorem, where dx and dy are just infinitesimally small distances in the x and y directions. If we take out the dx from the square root, we get this integral with respect to x. Now since we want to find the path of minimum distance between a and b, that's essentially equivalent to finding the function y equals f of x between a and b which minimizes the integral i. Our integral i is basically a functional in this case because it depends on what function you plug in, and because the output that returns after plugging in a function is a real number, the distance to be specific. So in attempting to find the path of shortest distance between a and b, it turns out that we need to use calculus of variations to find the function f of x that minimizes our functional i. Now it doesn't always have to be the distance functional we're minimizing, we could be minimizing another functional, or we could even be maximizing something. As an example, suppose again we have the points a and b in the x1, y1, and x2, y2 coordinates, but this time suppose we want to minimize the time it takes for a particle to travel from a to b, assuming that the particle's velocity is some function of its coordinates x and y. In that case, our goal would be to minimize the integral from a to b of the arc length element ds divided by the velocity, because distance over speed gives you time. 
We can then rewrite this ds just like we did before to get the following integral in terms of y and x. This time our problem statement requires that we minimize the functional t by finding the function f of x that results in the shortest time traveled between a and b. This is also known as the brachistochrone problem for the case of a particle falling under gravity on a path from a to b. Hopefully these two examples have given you an idea of the types of problems that calculus of variations deals with. Let's go back to our comparison between regular calculus and variational calculus now. Again, regular calculus deals with functions that map real numbers to other real numbers, while variational calculus deals with functionals that map functions to real numbers. If we want to find the values of x that make a function stationary, we just solve df by dx equals zero. But in calculus of variations, we need to solve differential equations to find the stationary function for a functional. In the examples we showed, the functional was often written as an integral involving the function or its derivative. And in general, we can write the functional i as the integral of some capital F of the function y, its derivative dy by dx, and x. To make this integral stationary, we need to solve some differential equations. Another name for these differential equations is the Euler-Lagrange equations, the variational calculus analog of df by dx equals zero. Anyway, that should do it for this animated video. Now, I spent a bunch of time writing Python code to make these animations smooth, and if you want to learn how to code yourself, perhaps you'd be interested in today's sponsor. Brilliant.org helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive hands-on lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and artificial intelligence. Each lesson, like these ones right here about computer science and programming, is crafted with award-winning teachers, researchers, and professionals so that you can learn new concepts in a hands-on manner that maximizes your retention and builds your problem-solving skills. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash facultyofcon or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching.